If you've just discovered that your RV has the dreaded flexible tubing with a pinch clamp on a PEX fitting problem, maybe it's already leaking, but you don't want to remove the flexible tubing because it's in a slide out or it's impractical because it goes down below the deck of the RV. In today's video, I'm going to teach you my third method for pairing this type of improper connection. If you're new here, my name is Jacob. I have a bunch of free resources for RV owners, including my four point don't get stranded checklist, which covers four of the most common ways that RVs get broke down on the side of the road and how you can avoid that happening to your RV. The third method is going to be using flaret fittings. So let me show you how a flaret fitting works, where you have PEX tubing on one side and flexible tubing improperly pinch clamped on. We need to transition from PEX to flex tubing with the correct type of fitting. In this case, we're going to use a flaret straight connector. And on one side, we're going to use the crimp collar for PEX. And on the other side, we're going to use the adapter for flexible tubing. We don't need this fitting on either side. So we can actually just start with cutting out, cut out the fitting so that you have flexible hose and PEX. Take the collar for PEX and put it on the PEX side. Take the collar for the flexible tubing and put it on the flexible side. If this tubing has expanded over time, it's going to be a little bit of a tight squeeze to get this on. Pro tip, it helps to put this fitting in without the bushing and wiggle it around to make this tubing a little larger in diameter. That helps this go inside the tubing without getting bunched up. The bushing goes on the flare and then we're gonna carefully work this in until it's firmly seated. Next, bring this twist locking collar. We wanna make sure the threads are lined up straight. Now this is not fully on, but it's hard to hold. So I'm gonna use a pair of pliers to hold on the fitting here. Now I can't actually hold it tight enough to turn it. So this flare wrench is designed for these lock collars. This little metal piece actually fits exactly inside of those tabs and helps you loosen and tighten this. I'll show you how it works in just a minute, but you can also use this on this adapter. So we're gonna hook this metal bar while I'm tightening this, folks, if you're an RV owner, you should definitely check out my tool-free RV maintenance course. There's 15 tips that will save you up to $50,000 in repair costs. And these are based on real clients that I've had. Wayne took my tool-free RV maintenance course. If you found this video to be helpful today, say thanks to Wayne in the comments. That's nice and tight by hand. Now we're going to take our PEX tubing, and I'll show you why they call this a flare -it fitting. If you watch very closely right here, when I force the tubing over the barb, you can see it flaring out the PEX. You can see there's a nice wide bulge there. So now we take this locking collar, slide it down, spin it on, and same thing. I'm going to hold fitting in the middle and then take my flare it wrench, hook it right in there. If you try to use pliers like this on this nut, it'll, it'll tear up these and it takes so much force to turn this on that you can't practically do it by hand. So you need some sort of tool. I really recommend that you get this flare it wrench. That squeaking noise is normal. It's all plastic on plastic in there and it's getting very tight. So you want to keep going until it's really snug by hand. You don't want to put a ton of muscle into it. Look at that. Now we have a fitting that perfectly transitions from our PEX tubing through flare it to a flexible tubing. Turn the water back on and check for leaks. Always check for leaks, folks. Now you might be wondering why this is my third method when it seems to be the easiest and most straightforward of the three methods. I actually did not discover this as a product until after I was researching solutions for this video series. So because I've never used these fittings in the field, I ran three different tests to see if I could make it leak. The first is I pressurized the system to 55 PSI, which is normal operating pressure. Second, I took it up to 100 PSI. More pressure than you should ever have on your water system, but sometimes people hook up straight to city water and they still have high pressures. The third test was I used a heat gun to heat up these fittings to 120 degrees which is temperatures that your water system will experience. And with all three tests, with the high temperature and the high pressure, I did not see any leaks. If you want a more tried and true method, click here for a playlist of all the plumbing repair methods. Click here for more info about the plumbing problem so you know how to spot bad plumbing in an RV. Click here if you want to see me undercover RV shopping.